Now let's look at some examples. So in our first example here, I have the integral of e to the x times 1 plus e to the x to the ninth times 1 minus e to the x dx. Thinking about the techniques that we have so far, I don't have a rule that I can apply right away. Um, and it looks like although I could do some algebra with taking this 1 plus e to the x to the ninth and expanding it all out and multiplying it by these other terms that I have here, um, that's going to be a rather time consuming way to do this problem. So um, I want to think about using u substitution as a tool to help me here. So remember when we're thinking about using u substitution, we think about um, letting u be the inside of a more complicated function. Um, and that's going to be useful when I have the derivative of that inside function being multiplied times, uh, excuse me, my integral in some way. So if I let u here be 1 plus e to the x, then my du will be e to the x dx. And I notice I do have that e to the x dx um, as part of the integral. So if we rewrite this in terms of u, let's see what we get so far. So I'm going to have u to the ninth. My e to the x dx is going to be my du. And then I have this 1 minus e to the x sort of left over. So I'm going to need to get this 1 minus e to the x in terms of u. Okay, so we mentioned that in this section we're going to be taking these techniques that we've already learned, but we kind of get some more involved versions of using those techniques. So in addition to just doing the substitution of u equals 1 plus e to the x, it's also going to be useful for me to do a little bit of an additional substitution where I want to figure out what e to the x is in terms of u. So notice that if u equals 1 plus e to the x, then e to the x is equal to u minus 1. Okay, so we can have u to the ninth now times 1 minus u minus 1 du. So we can simplify this. So I have my integral of u to the ninth. This is going to be um, times 1 minus u minus a negative 1 or plus 1. So this is 2 minus u du. Okay, so now we can use um, the algebra technique of expanding this. So I'm going to have my integral of 2u to the ninth minus u to the tenth du. Okay, we know that the integral of a product of two functions is not um, the product of the integrals, just like the derivative of a product was not the, the product of the derivatives. So I do have to expand that out, and then I can do the integral of each term because the integral of a sum or a difference is the sum or the difference of the integrals of each piece. So I'm going to have my integral of my first term is this 2u to the 10th over 10, then I'll have minus u to the 11th over 11, plus c. So we're just applying a rule there. And now in our last step, I need to put this back in terms of x since my original integral was saying integrate this function dx. So I'm going to replace u by 1 plus e to the x and simplify my fraction a little bit. So this 2 over 10 will become 1 over 5. And this is 1 plus e to the x to the 10th. And then we have, oops, this is, should look like a, a 10 here. Okay, then we have minus 1 plus e to the x to the 11th all over 11 plus c. And that would be our final answer on that problem. Okay, so this shows the variation of doing this little extra sort of substitution where you get your um, part of your um, integram that's in terms of x in terms of u. Okay, with these two little extra steps. So let's see what kind of technique is used in the, in the next example. So here we've got um, an integral of x plus 2 all over x squared plus 4. Um, this is a type of integrand called a rational function where I have a um, polynomial um, divided by a polynomial. We'll, we'll be studying um, integrals of rational functions later um, in... Um, See, I think it's section 8.5, but this is giving us kind of an introduction to some of the types of um, functions that we're going to be seeing throughout chapter 8. Uh, I want to think about how I can integrate this using just tools that I know so far. Um, so looking at this integral, one thing that you might think to do is, is you might think to do use substitution. So let's just sort of think about um, what would happen if I tried to apply that right away. So I could let u be that denominator of x squared plus 4. And then my du is 2x dx. I see I have an x um, in my numerator, so I might say, okay, 1 half du is equal to x dx. 
But the problem with applying this u substitution to this whole integrand is I actually have not just x, but x plus 2 up there. So I don't have just a product of um, 1 over x squared plus 4 times x dx. I have this 1 over x squared plus 4 times this whole quantity of x plus 2. So I can't use u substitution on the whole integrand. So what can we do? Well, remember that when I'm thinking about fractions, um, if I have something like a plus b over c, that is a over c plus b over c. I can divide each term by the denominator. So that x squared plus 4 is really my common denominator um, in the fractions x over x squared plus 4 and 2 over x squared plus 4. So I want to split this back up into two different pieces. And this idea of taking a rational function and splitting it up into simpler pieces um, is an important idea that we'll see later when we look at a technique called partial fractions, or partial fraction decomposition. So here I'm just using some algebra to be able to divide up this integral into two separate integrals. And then we can take the integral of each one of those pieces um, using a different technique. So the first integral here, I can use u substitution on this. The second integral, I won't be able to use u substitution because I don't have an x or an x term or anything like that in my numerator. I just have this number 2. So we want to recall a rule that could help us with that second um, integral. Remember that the integral of 1 over x squared plus 1 is actually the arctan function, the inverse tangent function. So I have the integral of 1 over x squared plus 1 is arctangent of x plus c. Now I've got this x squared plus 4, so we're going to have to do a little bit more work to make use of that, that arctangent rule. But this is going to be some sort of arctan related kind of function. Okay, so let's look at the first term here with the u substitution. So the x dx part is going to become 1 half du all over my x squared plus 4 is going to be my u. Then I have this plus 2 times the integral of 1 over x squared plus 4. So to make use of this rule here, I'd like that to be um, something squared plus 1 instead of plus 4. Um, thinking of maybe being able to do some sort of u substitution where instead of having x squared, I have some sort of u, something else being squared. So if I factor out a 4 from that denominator, I have 4 times x squared over 4 plus 1 dx being equal to my integral of 2 over x squared plus 4. So let's see. Let's go back to our first integral. Integrating 1 half du over u, I have 1 half times log of the absolute value of u, because we know the integral of 1 over u du is log of the absolute value of u plus c. Okay. I can bring this uh, 4 in the denominator out, so I have 2 over 4, or 1 half, and then I have this integral of 1 over this x squared over 4 plus 1. So I'm going to rewrite the x squared over 4 as x over 2 quantity squared plus 1 dx, just so I can see how um, this is related to my rule of the integral of 1 over x squared plus 1 being the arctan function. So notice instead of having just x squared, I have this x over 2 squared. So now I can make use of a, of a variable substitution. So since I already used the letter u, I'm just going to choose to use a different letter just so I don't get confused between my different variables. So I'll let w equal x over 2. So my dw is 1 half dx, or 2 dw is dx. So I've got my 1 half log of the absolute value of u. I can go ahead and replace my absolute value of u with my x squared plus 4. Then I have this plus 1 half, the integral of 1 over w squared plus 1. And my dx gets replaced by this 2 dw. Okay. Now let's go on to my next line here. I have 1 half log. Now notice I kept the absolute value bars initially when I replaced u by x squared plus 4, but I can simplify this just a little bit in the next step. Since I know x squared plus 4 is always positive, I can just make that parentheses here. So I've got log of x squared plus 4. Then I'm going to have plus, let's see, I'm going to have this 2 over 2. So I'll just have a single 1 outside of my integral. Integral of 1 over w squared plus 1, well, that's just going to be arctangent of w according to our rule. 
Okay, so we're going to be able to say that this integral of x plus 2, just to summarize, over x squared plus 4 dx is equal to this 1 half log of x squared plus 4 plus arc tangent of x over 2 plus c. Okay, so that would be our final answer there for that um, integral. Okay, so one thing to, um, to keep in mind is that with this type of function, what you're going to see anytime you have this sort of linear thing over a quadratic thing, um, you're going to be able to split it up and you're going to get some sort of log function plus some sort of arctangent function. Those are going to be the two pieces of what the antiderivative looks like. I want to make one note of what else we might have been able to do to take that integral of 2 over x squared plus 4. There's also um, a more general rule that you can choose to use instead of doing this in-between work that we did here that says that the integral of 1 over x squared plus a squared dx is equal to 1 over a arctangent of x over a plus c. So in our example, we have a is equal to 2. So our integral is 1 half arctangent of x over 2. And then with that 2 out in front, that's how we get just that arctangent of x over 2. Um, once you've done lots and lots of these problems, you may end up wanting to just apply that rule so you don't have to write out that in-between work with that w substitution. But if you've forgotten the, the general form of the rule, because it's much easier to remember sort of this basic integral of 1 over x squared plus 1, then now you have a way to um, derive that antiderivative if you've forgotten this more general rule. 